Hey guys, welcome back to the New York studio. I'm James with Hobby King. Alongside me, we have Max, and we're back with another FPV Basics. It's the first one we have in 2016. If you're new to this, uh, we did a few last year, and it's mostly just a uh, series as we find things, um, more things in the FBV department as we come out with new products. We like to present them this way because yeah, a lot of people really, a lot of customers we find, obviously, their FPV customers, a pretty specific type of group, always looking for new stuff. And that is what we have here today. So obviously the title of this video is Ground Stations and we have a really cool uh, unit here that Max will uh, now take us through what's on the table and why we might want this type of unit. The big guy in the middle is yes. our Quantum FPV ground station power supply unit. It's a mouthful, but it does a whole lot of things, so it makes sense. Okay. Uh, basically what this is, is an all-in-one unit for your monitor, your FPV receivers, and your tablets or whatever you want to use with a ground station. It will power everything. It will do video out to your goggles or to your monitor. It will do diversity. It's a nice all-in-one unit for, again, setting up a pretty nice ground station. Yeah, I mean, actually, first things first, as you were testing before, we built these things up. Max ran it a little bit, just noticing that, oh, I don't need a battery for my headset goggles, don't need a battery for this, for the monitor, you know, because we've come out with monitors, we've come out with a lot of stuff. This sort of wraps it in a nice, neat little package. One and, package with one battery. You know, getting to the power supply unit, noticing just on the front all the options you have to plug things in. It mm -hmm. looks like you could get a lot going. Let's see, we'll go through what's on the front here. Yeah. So we've got a five volt out for your, with a barrel connector. We have a USB out so you can charge your tablet, your phone, whatever you're using uh, to fly your quad or your drone or what have charge you. Charge your phone. Charge your phone Why too. Not? Um, and then you have four 12 volt barrel uh, connector outputs. So you can power your FPV receivers, you can power your monitor, you can power your goggles like the Quanta V2s. Uh, you could even probably rig it up to power your fat shark goggles or anything like that. Wow, he's the workhorse of this whole episode. That's exactly. what we're yep. sort of basing this all around, and it is awesome. But before we get to just what's involved here, um, ground stations, why would somebody getting into FPV want a ground station as opposed to something else? Well, your goggles may limit you with the receiver that's built in it, so you can use a more powerful or a receiver that can do more channels. Like, let's say you only do 32 channels on your goggles, but you want to do something that does race bands. So you may want to get a 40-channel receiver, have it on a ground station. You can also do some something that does diversity. If your goggles okay. don't do diversity, you can put a diversity receiver on it, do something with a circular polarized and a patch, so you have directional and non-directional, so yep, you can do yep. proximity and long range flight. A lot of different things you want to do. It's just a little better option than the one the receiver is built into your goggles. Yeah, immediately I think of guys, if you're out at flight fields, like most people who watch our show, I assume, are members of flight clubs, and I mean, you just, to have the ground station in a neat little box like this, mm -hmm. to just walk it out on a tripod like we have, it seems like an easy setup. But all right, back to what we have in front of us here, because we have a lot of products involved in it, so you've already heard about the power supply unit. Max, let's start with what's on the side of the power supply unit. So on the side of the power supply unit, we have these awesome little guys. They're the Quantum 5.8 gigahertz auto scan FPV receivers. Nice. So they do 32 channels, which they don't pick up race band, but they're still great for just FPVing, flying. For most people for aren't flying race band. 99% of people. Yeah. Um, so we have those strapped to the side. They go in these nice little plastic holders that seem built for it. Yep, they are, and they slide out. There you there go. There you go. They slide out so you can... Now in lieu of taking it all apart yeah. already, because we want to go out and fly this quick. They We're not doing that. <laughs> they slide out, so you can put them back in there, and they fit these 5.8 receivers perfectly. Perfect. Now and why would you want two? That's... That's for diversity, because for diversity. this box will do diversity for you. That's awesome. All right, so that's on the side. Now, Max, go through what's on the back of this guy. All right, in the back is where all the fun stuff is. You have your video out ports, you have your two video in ports from your receivers, and then you have your RSSI ports, because like I said, this will work as a diversity unit. So if you're using two FPV receivers, you will have the unit able be able to switch back and forth between the one with the best signal. Nice. All right, and going around the other side, you'll see you got an LCD display, but I see the compartment that looks like where the power supply is gonna get its power. So what do you have for that, Max? We've got a Turnigy four cell, 5,000 milliamp battery. This power supply unit will support up to four cells. Uh, now it does have an XT60 connector built in 
So, for those of you using a battery like this that has one of our HXT 4mm connectors, make sure you get an adapter so you can plug everything in. That's a couple cents. Yep. Now, plugging it in is super easy. You just slide it in, plug your XT60 connector in, and now the unit also has cell voltage monitoring. So you can monitor each cell's voltage in your power supply unit, see if you're getting low, and it will also do low voltage indication. So you can set that between three volts and up. So when it monitors the cells and says, oh, he's getting a 3.8 volts, it'll start beeping at you. Okay. And we can demonstrate that when we power everything off. Yeah, let's do it. So let's yeah. Right now, if you look at the little LCD screen, we're seeing our total pack voltage tells you the cell difference, and it's gonna cycle through all of our four cells and give you the individual cell voltage. Now, as I mentioned, you can change the voltage at which the alarm goes off, and you okay. do that by pressing the button here, and I have it set for 3.7. 3.7, and Perfect. you can change that. If you click it again, you can go up by five. in 0 .05, 0 .05 increments. increments. And then you find the one that you like, press and hold the button, it'll beep twice, and then bring you back to the monitoring is. screen. So now if any one cell goes down below 3.8, you don't beep at you. Nice. All right, so now the power supply unit is powered up. So we're gonna plug in some of our components here and let's find out what it really does. So we have our FieldView 888 monitor on top. So we'll be able to show you guys the video. This is a beautiful monitor, by the way. It's awesome. Looks really good. It does lots of stuff. <laughs> so if we power everything on. Flip the switch. Our scanners will come on. Get a little fan inside, keeps everything cool. Nice. And we have power to our monitor, so we'll go ahead and turn that on. And now we're obviously not seeing anything, so if I were to grab one of our Axe 180s. There it is. And turn it on. This is what they'll be flying later. You should see we're getting video. Perfect. So, hey Alex, what's up? James? Now obviously this is just indicative. We're in here, it's always fuzzy signal yeah, if we're in here, but it looks great. We're also really close. We're really close to it. But yep, and now if you were to go flying, like we have these two set up and it does diversity, we have the patch and we have a dipole, so whichever one is receiving the better signal, the diversity controller inside will switch to that one. So you'll always have good signal coming out to your goggles or to your monitor. Yeah, now this uh, this patch we do have, this is a pretty big one. Yep. It's on our website. This was just on the new items page as well. What is this? So on here we have an Omway circular polarized 14 dBi patch. Um, so it's not directional. Nice, I thought it was directional, so that's good. Not directional. I'm all um, for circular polarized. So, and then we also have a regular dipole, but you could always screw on a directional patch or just a regular circular polarizer. Yeah, and these are new as well from Amway. From Amway, those are left-hand circular left polarizers. So, I mean, that's about it for this whole unit. We have the Quantum V2s, which I set up uh, as we were uh, building. Took me about 10 minutes to build. Now, the beauty of the V2s, or well, the lack of V2s, they don't come with a receiver. So, this is an option for somebody who, you know, maybe you don't have goggles at all, and you're thinking about getting V2s, but just wanna, you know you're gonna FPV, and you just want a dialed system then you strap them on, but I'll do a little flying from the V2s connected to that themselves. Alex is gonna plug in his Fat Sharks connected. Max is gonna get connected. We're gonna go outside. We got a little snow on the ground, so we're gonna bring some snow planes. These guys are gonna risk some quads in the snow, I yeah. think, cool. and we're gonna go have a little fun. So let's take it outside and see what it can really do. All right guys, so as we said, we're outside at our local spot. We got a lot of snow on the ground, but that's not gonna deter us from some good FPV. We got the Tundra on skis, we got a skipper, and we got a Bix, which you can belly take off from the snow, we hope. But either way, we got enough planes to put in the sky and to really test uh, the functionality of the power supply unit with the diversity and the auto scans and all this stuff we're talking about. So Max, set it up again. We did it on the table, but now that we're out here, let's show everybody what we got. So where are you going first? Receivers are on. I gotta go to the Tundra, plug that in, then we'll get scanning on the channels. Perfect. And we'll jack into the goggles and we'll fly some back. Alright, do we see the do we see signal? We see signal. Ah, oh, we got a big prop in front, but that won't stop us. Yep, we're both receiving. It should be running on this one right now since we have a better signal strength with our huge 14 dBi patch. So nice. that was expected. And if we ever get better signal on circular polarized, it's gonna switch back and forth. 
All right, guys, so you got the monitor going, and now Max is going to plug directly into the power supply unit mm -hmm. through one of the other video out ports so he can have his goggles so he's seeing exactly what the monitor's seeing. And this is a beautiful way, guys, if you're at a flight field and you always want to show people what you're, uh, what you're actually seeing, because it's one thing to talk about FPV, it's another thing for people to actually see it. So just having the ground station alone in that sense, it's a nice little uh, option to show people, take people for rides, if you will. But uh, Max, here are your sticks in your hands we got tundra on the ground with the fpv tray wanna, skis on it you want to max it. whenever you're ready let's do it take them for a ride <laughs> wow it's the stole takes off real fast in fpv it's great nice this is your first time fpving the tundra correct yes sir nice Whew. watch those trees oh, yeah. <laughs> And it's funny though, you'd think the FPV tray would be, how, how are you finding flying with the props like that? It's all right, right? It just looks like you're watching an old TV. Yeah. You could really mount it anywhere, but. Might as well use the FPV tray. Might as well use the FPV tray. This is cool. So I don't know about you, but I have yet to see any breakup of yeah, any sort. It's good to me. Occasional click here or there, but nothing too crazy. Definitely real clear when I am high up there. It looks gorgeous. He's gonna come right over Alex's shoulders. Oh, he's low. Ooh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, let's show the full Ooh. use. I think I have the, the right setup. So obviously the V2s don't have a receiver in it. So being that you have the box and you have another video out port, I should be able to plug in and just see exactly what Max is seeing right now and go for the ride with him. So I'm gonna do that now. I have a male to male RCA cable. So you're into the yellow port, plugging in to the video out. All right, so yellow cord in, and then we have one more 12 volt out port. Plugging that in. I've got power, and I've got Max's signal. Perfect. I love these V2s, man. They are really immersive. The first time I think I've ever put them on. It literally feels like you're in a movie theater. Wow. Alright, set up for landing. Zero. Flaps on. Wow, as that prop starts slowing down, look at that. That's funny. Max is coming in, trying not to hit a bush. Looking for that landing though. Oh, there it is. Boom. <laughs> nice! Oh. Wow, that Ooh. was awesome. Oh, so guys. I, I, I don't know what else you could want in a ground station. This power supply unit box we got, when you throw on some of these auto scans on the side, you get the full diversity, and then you have the functionality being able to have multiple people plug in and see the same thing that the pilot's seeing. It's, it's fantastic. Now, Max, I mean, what else can you say about it? Can't really beat it. Like you said, great diversity setup. Uh, can power everything, you can charge everything. You don't really have to worry about it. It's all in one unit. Perfect, Definitely. now the one thing we'll show you, which we didn't want to show you, we've used this tray at the back just to hide some of our wires because we couldn't find anything smaller than six feet cords for some of our RCA plugs. But this tray on the back um, could hold a tablet. So if you want to run Mission Planner, right, you have a USB port again on the, P on the PSU. So you'll be able to put your tablet right there. You might be able to hook a phone in there too, based you on could, the sliding. It, it so it comes, comes with adapters. So it has a smaller adapter. You could put a phone in there. So a big Android phone or iPhone fit in there. You could power it, run Mission Planner, run telemetry, run whatever you want right off the power supply unit. Perfect. So guys, that's going to do it for this FPV Basics. I'm about to go fly another plane myself. We're going to be out here all day flying this thing, and we're probably going to bring it everywhere we go. So stick around for the next FPV Basics episodes. Look out for more product profiles, more product videos. Subscribe to Hobby King Live, and we'll see you real soon.
Nice.